Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do some no line coloring today. The stamp set that I'm using today is from Penny Black, and it's illustrated by the amazing Mo Manning. If you have not colored her images before, you will want to do that. And she's got a whole site where she does digis. And if you like to use digis, you can get that and buy a bunch of stamps over there. I like having the actual stamps in hand because I can do things like this type of no line coloring, which is for me a lot easier than dealing with the printer and trying to print on paper in a, a toned kind of way. Uh, mostly because I have no printer right now and I haven't for several months now. I have not been able to find a printer that I want to get. I've been trying to get a particular company that I had one for to answer me about the ink that they used to use because I liked the way that it printed. And I want to find out if they're making a replacement printer and they haven't answered. So I just keep running out to my local FedEx to get things printed. So yeah, I prefer having the stamps on hand because then I don't have to deal with the printer deal. Nonetheless, I am working on some Nina Desert Storm, and this is Nina. It's not craft paper. Craft paper has, if you, you buy them, they're called craft. It has a different texture to it, a different makeup of the paper itself. But this is the same as the white Nina, if you use the solar white like I do. It's just a different color. And what I recommend before you do any coloring on this with Copic markers like I'm doing, that you actually color yourself a hex chart or a color chart of some kind on that paper. Because you're going to see the difference in colors. It's really hard to make the color choices, otherwise you can keep going over them and over them to darken them, which is kind of what I end up doing somewhat. However, if you have the, the chart right next to you, you can refer to colors and see how they dry back because a color that looks really strong when you first put it on ends up drying back significantly because all that moisture that went into the paper is gone and that means the paper is going to lighten up. In coloring on this paper, you can actually really experiment with getting super dark with colors because you have that strong contrast that you need to create and you can get a lot darker and not feel like you're overdoing it like you can sometimes on white paper or white cardstock, should I say. So I wanted to keep this in a Christmassy kind of look. So I've chosen some, some reds and greens, but I'm using all desaturated ones because I wanted it to feel kind of vintage, kind of antique-y. And so I'm using the R8s for the reds and the YG9s for the greens so that I end up with some really uh, desaturated, grayed out kind of colors. This is my favorite R89 and I'm having my light come from the upper left and that means the shadow is going to be way back here on the back of her jacket and I'm kind of, you know, with my, you can see my marker kind of thinking about where that light's going to be casting the shadow from the basket down onto her jacket. And you can definitely see the difference in that lightest color going all the way to this R89 darkest color because it gets a little bit on the, the different side as you go from a 3 to a 9 and then using the 5 in the middle and staying with that for the colorway. But one of the things that's happening here and even though I do have my new glasses, I can finally see well again. I'm very excited about that. My vision is going so badly that I was having trouble seeing, but now I'm, I'm all set with new glasses and hopefully that's going to not become an, an ongoing problem. My doctor told me that I might have the beginnings of cataracts and I know lots of people have stories about how easy the cataract surgery is, etc. The thing that worries me is the working up to that point and the vision slowly degrading until it's bad enough that you would have that surgery. I don't really have the patience to go through waiting because I'm an artist and I need my eyeballs. But nonetheless, my doctor's on it and she's taking good care of me. So 
no worries there but I can see well now and I'm very happy with that so I'm adding darks to my greens and all the different colors in the same kind of a way just kind of following where I think the shadows would cast from a light source in the place where she's looking up so I thought whatever it is she's looking up at is the thing that's going to cast the highlights onto those edges on the highest edges on the each of the shapes and then the shadows are on the far side far away from it and even creating a texture on her hat you probably can't see a whole lot of it but there is this really interesting knitted type of texture in the stamp and I wanted to recreate that in the marker it's real easy when you're doing no line coloring to lose a lot of the detail of the stamp and that's one of the reasons why I'm leaving it in the misty because I'm going to do some restamping as I go and just kind of reaffirm some of those lines and figure out what the heck I'm doing because even if I have my new glasses it's still not all that easy to see when you're stamping with a really light color on something like this desert storm so here I'm going to stamp again and you can stamp just a particular area. You can just put a little extra ink on the face if you want the face outlines to pop out a little bit more. The things that are in her basket I think are chestnuts. That's at least what I'm coloring them as. They could be a basket of flowers but I don't know that you'd have a basket of flowers in the winter as she is all dressed up for winter. And I kept losing the detail on her basket so I had to keep restamping that throughout the process. But when it's in the misty, it's going to relocate that stamp in the exact right place. So as long as you can handle having it in the misty, then you're good to go. I do have another sheet of paper underneath of this because otherwise, since this is a thick cling stamp, I had to take out the pad and everything that's in there. And you want to have something absorbent on the opposite side of your Copic coloring. I've had some people ask me if like, Tim's glass mat is a good thing to use for Copic coloring and I say no because when your ink goes through the paper that's how the blending happens when it bleeds through the back and if you're not getting that bleed through in the back you're really not getting the full benefit of mixing that color within the fibers of the paper but what happens is when that color goes through the back if it hits something plastic or glass on the other side it may puddle up and push back through the paper again and come back on the other side. So I like to put a piece of something absorbent on the other side. Even if there's not much that goes through, at least it keeps that paper from bleeding all the way through and then having it come back up in an unexpected location. So that's what I have. Another sheet of paper underneath of the Desert Storm paper that I have here. So reaffirming some of my shadows underneath here on her her dress that's underneath her dress that's underneath the jacket the, the, all these layers I love winter I love layers I'm so looking forward to the colder weather coming I know I'm weird that way but I love getting all snuggly in a lot of layers and wearing gloves and scarves and hats and things just makes me happy so this kind of an image really does that for me. When doing something like the hair, you just use the very, very tip of the marker, and it's really good practice to just use the super light touch and only use just the tip, but you could also do that with a colored pencil. Now I want to stamp this, but I want to leave the image in the in the misty. So what I've done is line that block up at the top so that I can at least get it straight. So that was how I got the stamping in there. I knew I wanted to do a little bit more work by adding highlights with a pencil on the stamped image. And I, I didn't want to remove it and lose all chance of being able to restamp the image. I know I should be able to trust putting the image back in the Misty after coloring it for a while outside of it and then just put it back in. But sometimes it's off by just a hair when you put it back in depends on how hard it's pressed against the side or something so I prefer if I'm going to actually restamp something if I know I'm gonna do that I just leave it inside the misty itself but I finally was satisfied that my image was the way I wanted it to be so I took it out to work on the snow 
and add some pencil snow at the bottom and then I used a little micron pen to add her eye back in because her eye kind of had disappeared and you can look at the packaging and that sort of thing to see what the image might actually look like. I popped up the panel on some dimensional adhesive and put it on a card base made of the same paper and it's very nice and flat-ish so it's going to go very well through the post office without having to actually pay extra postage because it's only got that one simple layer of dimensionals. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already because I got lots more fun coming your way. Talk to you guys later. Go make something beautiful. See ya.